One-hit wonders in college football are intriguing. You have a team that has never been good in the history of their program. They come out one season, somehow win 10 to 12 games, make a big bowl, win it, get a bunch of hype, and then they go back to mediocrity the very next year and for the very next decade? What are we talking about here? I saw a video by Josh Johnson. He mentioned one-hit wonders in college football, and I thought to myself, that's an amazing video idea. Shout out to Josh. He makes great content. No, he's not paying me for a shout out. When I see something that I like, I'm going to be vocal about it. That's just how I am. Before we get started, go in the comments right now and tell me your biggest one-hit wonder off the top of your head. Also, Go crazy on the like button. These videos are very hard to get out through the algorithm. Make sure to like so this video reaches as many college football fans as possible. The team that inspired me to make this video was 2019 Minnesota. All right, in 2017, they got coach PJ Fleck from Western Michigan. It was row the boat time. He went five and seven in his first year, then seven and six. And then all of a sudden they go 11 and two. Yes, they were a game away from reaching the Big Ten Championship, that team was just nuts. They were led by sophomore quarterback Tanner Morgan, who had over 3,000 passing yards on the season, 30 touchdowns. He was second team all Big Ten. There was a point where he had college football by storm. Minnesota was ranked as high as number seven in week 11 before they lost a big one to Wisconsin, and that was the game that kept them out of the Big Ten Championship. Surprisingly, they didn't make a New Year's Six Bowl. They beat number 12 Auburn in the Outback Bowl by a touchdown, and that capped off one of their best seasons in a long time. And then in 2020, they returned to form. They went three and four. Then in 2021 and 2022, they had solid years at nine and four. And then in 2023, they went six and seven. So this season in 2019 was a complete flash in the pan. This one's gonna bring back a lot of fond memories. The 2012 Texas A&M Aggies with coach Kevin Sumlin, they went 11-2, and two, and oh yeah, they had Money Manziel, the GOAT, the most exciting quarterback in college football history. In 2011 with coach Mike Sherman, they went 7-6. and six. In 2010, they did have a nice 9-4 and four season, but they were very much a mediocre team. Six wins, four wins, seven wins. And then in 2012, led by Heisman winner Johnny Manziel, they went 11-2. and two. They won the Cotton Bowl against Duke. Their only two losses were against a ranked Florida team by three points and as number six LSU team by less than a touchdown. Imagine if Johnny Manziel could have played in the national championship. That just would have broke television. And then after the season, they went completely back to normal. Nine wins, eight wins, eight wins. They went back to mediocrity, but this year garnered so much money for that program. Everyone invested. The Texas A&M fans rejoiced. This team was a huge hit and we will never forget them. This next one's tricky because this team had two one-hit wonder seasons, 2010 Auburn and also 2013 Auburn, but I'm gonna go with 2010 Auburn because it happened first. Auburn in 2009 went eight and five. In 2008, they went five and seven. They got Gene Chizik as their head coach, and then they went 14 and 0 in 2010. Out of nowhere, won the national championship. Heisman, Cam Newton, they beat Oregon. It was nuts. And then the next year, they go eight and five. And then in 2012, they go 3-9. and nine. Completely out of the ordinary. That team was so much fun to watch. But then after those two losing seasons, they got Gus Malzahn as their head coach in 2013 with quarterback Nick Marshall. Then they went 12-2, and two, made it to the national championship game. That was the famous one where they lost against Jameis Winston and Florida State. And then they returned back to mediocrity again. So it was like one great season bad bad another great season and then mediocrity forever as a kid when I first watched these Auburn teams I thought Auburn was an elite program because that's all I knew but I realized over time that Auburn was a complete flash in the pan fraud the 2016 Colorado Buffaloes who hadn't made a bowl game since 2007 came out of nowhere won the Pac-12 South reached the championship game against Washington lost by 30 went to the Alamo Bowl lost by 30 to number 12th ranked Oklahoma State they had Steven Montez as their quarterback this team was a complete fraud they had no business winning the week Pac-12 South but however you want to spin it they had a 10 win season out of the blue with coach Mike McIntyre he won the Pac-12 coach of the year this team was hilarious and then they went back to five and seven five and seven five and seven in the very next three seasons I forgot about this team entirely and that just shows how irrelevant this program is. I had no clue. I was just looking back through AP polls of every single year. And I'm like, they finished at seven in the AP poll? Are you serious? 2014 Georgia Tech went 11 and three. That's all I got to say. They beat number 19 Clemson. They beat their rival, a top 10 Georgia. And then they were two points away from winning the ACC championship against Florida State. They went to a New Year's Six beat number seven Mississippi State. Guys, this was a weird time. Mississippi State was ranked top 10. Georgia Tech was beating Georgia. This was a very wacky time in college football, but nevertheless, this was a great team. Their coach at the time, Paul Johnson, ended up retiring in 2018, so you probably haven't heard of his name. They went three and nine in 2015. The very next season, they only had one conference win in the ACC Coastal. 
a very weak division. What are we even doing here? Another 2019 team. 2019 was just nuts. The Baylor Bears with Matt Rule. Matt Rule, you are a savior. Matt Rule, you are a wizard. Because in 2017, Baylor went 1-11. Then they went 7-6. And, and then in 2019, they went 11-3, making the Sugar Bowl with Charlie Brewer. Oh my gosh. Baylor started out the season 9-0 before losing, unfortunately, at home to Oklahoma by three points. They played Oklahoma again in the conference championship game, lost by three. I mean, that was a great Oklahoma team that made the college football playoffs. Then they lost to Georgia in the Sugar Bowl. So a disappointing end to the season. But this team finished in the top 10. And it was just unbelievable what they accomplished in such a short time. After that season, Matt Rule famously left to go to the NFL for a bag for a huge paycheck. Then Baylor returned to a losing season. And then in 2021, they went 12-2. and two. So what the heck? You're just good and then you're not good and then you're bad? Ugh, it's crazy. This team went 12-2 and two, and they actually won the Sugar Bowl. So they got their revenge. They beat number eight Ole Miss. And then now we know Baylor football again as a joke here in 2023. It's just a one hit wonder, a two hit wonder. This is a two hit wonder. It's hard to include UCF on this list because they were good for about three seasons. But come on, the 2017 self-claimed national champions with Scott Frost as their head coach. I got to give them an honorable mention. That was nuts. Do you guys think UCF should have deserved that championship? Obviously not, but it was fun seeing them beat Auburn in the Peach Bowl. 2018, Washington State with Mike Leach, the pirate. Grr, the pirate. Minshew mania, baby. We all know the mustache. This was a great time. They finished in the top 10 at number 10. They hadn't finished in the top 10 since 2003. Mike Leach had a lot of good teams starting in 2012, but they were always eight wins, nine wins. They could never make that next step. This team was so close to going to the Pac-12 championship. If they didn't lose to their rivals, Washington, which Washington owned them during that time period, they would have. But this team was so fun to watch. They won the Alamo Bowl. They had a great Pac-12 season. This was the hype. This was all the lore. In 2018, Washington State Cougars, Pullman, baby. The Alamo Bowl matchup was Brock Purdy, System QB, and Garter Minshew. What a matchup. Rest in peace, Mike Leach. He left way too soon. But those Washington State teams, they were just plugging in any single quarterback, and he was throwing for like 3,000, 5,000 yards that season. It was nuts. You guys remember Luke Falk? What? Do you guys remember Anthony Gordon? Like, Anthony Gordon just hopped in there and did his thing. And then, obviously, Cam Ward was next. That was with different coaching staff. But still, those are very fun teams to watch. The Cougs were never the same after 2018. And now, they don't even have a conference. <laughs> They don't have a conference. I shouldn't be laughing. I shouldn't be laughing. I'm an Oregon State fan. 2011 Arkansas. Woo pig suey, baby. They went 11-2. and two. Their only two losses, get this, guys, was to number three Alabama and number one LSU, the two teams that played in the national championship in a different year. This Arkansas team could have played in the national championship. Imagine that alternate universe. They finished at five in the polls. At five. And then they've never finished in the top five ever since. They never even finished in the top 20 ever since, man. The 2010 Nevada Wolf Pack out of the WAC Conference. Fun fact, not the Mountain West. Yes, the WAC, the Western Athletic Conference, had never had a 10-win season in their program history. They went 13-1. and I'm just going to let that settle in. 13-1, and their only loss was at Hawaii. Oh my gosh, if they just won that and went 14-0, and that could have been crazy. They did beat a Power 5 Cal and I was a Cal fan at the time. Kevin Riley, I had a signed picture by him, and he threw three interceptions that game, and they beat Cal 52 to 31. But what a team. I got to throw in some group of five love. I mean, that's pretty random. Let's see what they did after that year. After 2010, they really went seven and six, seven and six, four and eight. So yeah, complete flash in the pan. The final one could make a lot of you guys mad. 2019 LSU, Ed Orgeron. Yes, Ed Orgeron in himself was a one-hit wonder as a coach. Now, some people may say LSU can't be a one-hit wonder. They're a great program. They're a historically good program in the SEC. I get that, but it's more Ed Orgeron. He went 15-0 this season. They completely dominated everyone. They had Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase. That team completely came out of nowhere, and then they go 5-5 five and five the next season in 2020. That's a COVID year. I get that, but in 2021, he went 6-7. and seven. Ed Orgeron got kicked to the curb. They just completely went ham this season with the national championship yes lsu won the national championship with less miles they had great seasons so this is a not complete one hit wonder this team wasn't bad this wasn't an l program this was a great program but this one coach in specific ed orgeron man what the what was even that and now ed orgeron is retired i mean what else can you do when you have a 2019 LSU team? You pretty much can just go out and say, yeah, I had 2019 LSU. I have nothing else to do. He enjoys his time as a retired person. He said in an article, he loves it. He doesn't like waking up at 5 a.m., working to 11 p.m. He's enjoying the margaritas 
and he, he's just enjoying life. Thank you guys so much for reaching the end of the video. If you are new, make sure to subscribe to join the best family in college football. I've been Saturday Shenanigans, your home for unfiltered college football content, and I'll see you guys soon. I had a blast making that.